Well, the Nernst equation is really a story about two opposing forces, the electrical potential versus the chemical potential. Let's use the classic example of a ball on top of a hill to illustrate our point. Now, when the ball is at the top of the hill, it has stored energy, otherwise known as potential energy. Potential energy is equal to the height of the ball times the mass of the ball times the gravitational constant. If we let the ball roll down the hill and quickly apply an opposing force to stop the ball, that opposing force or kinetic energy must equal the potential energy in order to stop the ball. The Nernst equation describes a very similar process for the movement of charged particles like sodium, potassium, or chloride ions across a cell membrane. Like the ball on the hill that wants to roll down, molecules want to move from high concentration to low concentration. In other words, they want to move down their concentration gradient. The size of the concentration gradient can be quantified using the chemical potential equation. Now, if we want to prevent the charged molecule from moving down its concentration gradient, we must apply an opposing force. In this case, that opposing force is referred to as the electrical potential. Now, if we apply a sufficient electrical potential so there is no net movement of the charged molecule in or out of the cell, we will have reached the equilibrium potential. And that's exactly what the Nernst equation describes. In other words, the electrical potential represents the potential in millivolts, where there is no net movement of charged molecules in or out of a cell for a given chemical potential or concentration gradient. So now that we have a general sense of what the Nernst equation represents, let's describe the Nernst equation in greater detail. Now the Nernst equation is typically denoted as such, where E represents the electrical potential given in millivolts, and X represents the identity of the charged molecule. R represents the gas constant, which equals 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. T represents the temperature in Kelvin, which equals 298 Kelvin at 25 degrees Celsius. Z represents the valence of the charged particle. For example, sodium and potassium ions carry a valence of plus one, chloride and bicarbonate ions a valence of minus one, and calcium ions a valence of plus two. F represents the Faraday's constant, which equals 96,500 coulombs per mole. And finally, ln represents the natural logarithm of x in over x out, where x represents the intracellular concentration of the charged particle, while x out represents the extracellular concentration of the charged particle. Both are given in moles. Now there's a much easier way to remember the Nernst equation. I'll show you by simplifying it. First, we'll cancel out like terms. The Kelvin units in the gas constant and temperature can cancel each other, as do the mole units in the gas constant and the Faraday's constant. Next, let's convert joules to coulombs times volts, or V. And with that, we can cancel out the coulomb units in the gas constant and Faraday's constant, leaving us with volts. Now, if we solve for RT over F, we get 0 0.02567 volts, or 25.7 millivolts, at 25 degrees Celsius, or 298 Kelvin. Next, let's change the natural logarithm to log base 10 by multiplying everything by minus 2.303, which yields negative 59.2 millivolts over Z. Now, let's say the intracellular concentration of the charged particle equals 10 millimoles, and the extracellular concentration equals 100 millimoles. Now, the log base 10 of 10 millimole over 100 millimole equals negative one. So minus 59.2 millivolts over a Z of plus one times negative one gives us an equilibrium potential of positive 59.2 millivolts.